Not to be left out of the pack, LG issued a mini version of the LG G2, hoping to bask in the race of the flagship's market recognition. Samsung started this trend, releasing the S3 and S4 mini versions, then HTC followed suit with the One Mini, and now LG wants in too. This is Daniel from Phone Arena presenting the LG G2 Mini. The phone keeps the general shape of the flagship, as well as the signature keys on the back, but sports a 4.7 inch, 540 by 960 pixels display, a basic Snapdragon 400 processor, and an 8 megapixel camera. That's a rather dramatic departure from the characteristics of the G2, so has LG managed to strike the right price-to-value balance with the G2 Mini, or is it just riding on the G2 name recognition? Let's find out. We mentioned a general resemblance of the shape and chassis design between the G2 and the G2 Mini, but at closer inspection the Munchkin looks less refined, it's thicker, the side bezels are wider, and the plastic feels of lower quality. The G2 Mini has one thing going for it, however, compared to the flagship sibling in its international version. The rear cover is removable, so you can easily swap the battery or add more storage via microSD slot. The phone is fairly comfortable to hold, aided by the coarse pattern on the back that prevents slippage. At this size though, the power lock key on the back and the volume rocker there feel somewhat oddly placed. Instead of being right under your index finger, the rear buttons are now somewhere under the first phalanx, so you have to bend the digit significantly and search for the lock key each time. Thankfully, the volume rocker is not flush with the surface, like on the G2, but rather protruding slightly at the ends, uh, like on the G Pro 2, for example, so it's easier to feel impressed without looking. The back keys feel tight and sturdy, with a nice clicky feedback to them. At the bottom, the LG G2 Mini sports two elliptic openings covered with what looks like speaker grills, but in fact only one of them is a speaker and the other houses the single microphone. LG equipped the handset with an infrared beamer at the top, which can be used to control a TV or other home electronics by the company application. The 4.7-inch panel sports 540 by 960 pixels of resolution, which rings in 234 ppi pixel density. This is acceptable for general usage, but those of us spoiled by 720p or even 1080p displays are likely to notice the difference in detail presentation. The interface elements look cruder, with the individual pixels still quite visible. For a device whose price uh, places it in the upper mid-range category, we would like to see an HD 720p display, which would have meant the respectable 330 ppi, as much as LG had on its flagships way back in 2012, for example. The screen colors are somewhat off in the red and light blue departments, as shown in a color chart, uh, but nothing you'd notice uh, with an untrained eye. Just like on the G2, the color temperature is far from the reference and gravitates away towards the cold side of the spectrum, making white uh, or gray appear bluish. With uh, the 334 nits we measured, the display's peak brightness is rather average, so outside the screen is not very visible. You also have a problem when the sign is shining on the panel, as the screen reflects quite a lot of light uh, right back at you. The measured uh, 4 nits of minimum brightness is a good achievement though, so you can use the G2 Mini with comfort in a very dark environment. Being an IPS LCD screen, the G2 Mini display sports very good viewing angles from all sides. Shipping with Android 4.4 KitKat, the handset is naturally coated with the newest uh, Optimus UI overlay. This means uh, automatic landscape redrawing of the interface when you turn the phone sideways and the QMemo functionality that lets you do the on any home screen with your finger, as well as the QSlide floating apps that can hover a calculator or video player on top of everything else you're doing. The G2 Mini offers uh, a double tap to wake functionality, while we can lock the screen with two taps on an empty space on the home screen too. Moreover, LG's newfangled knock code is present here for the security oriented. It lets you create a unique combination of up to 8 taps in each quadrant of a frame drawn on the lock screen in order to give you access to the handset. A neat idea, but if you want to make it hard to guess, it becomes as time consuming as to enter a pin or gesture pattern. The knock code uh, execution itself is pretty straightforward and it didn't fail on, once on us, even if you don't tap right smack in the corners each time, you just have to hit the respective quadrant. With a wish that the frame for the taps was placed a bit high on the lock screen, as we wouldn't have to stretch our thumb all the way for reaching the lower two quadrants. A 1.2GHz quad-core Snapdragon 400 is what powers our G2 Mini with an Adreno 305 graphics. That uh, chipset sits a tad below the golden middle of mobile processors, so don't expect any performance wonders from the G2 Mini. The interface behavior is adequate without choppy movements or annoying lag, but it's not buttery smooth either. There's also a version of the phone with uh, NVIDIA's Tegra 4i Grey chipset for LTE markets, which is to arrive later on. The phone sports uh, 1GB of RAM and can keep quite a few apps in memory at the same time. 
The G2 Mini comes with 8 gigabytes of internal storage, of which only about 4 are user available, but you have a micro SD card slot for memory expansion. About the only complaint towards the default LG browser on the G2 Mini has nothing to do with its performance, which is adequate when it comes to panning, scrolling or zooming. It's the pixel density which is a minor annoyance, especially when you have seen those beautiful 1080p or even HD displays. The text here looks uh, garbled when zoomed out and a tad jagged when zoomed in. The phone offers a version with uh, 4G LTE connectivity or up to 21 megabits per second HSP plus download speeds, provided that you carry can supply those of course. The LTE version is pretty interesting as it sports a Tegra 4i chipset and a 13 megapixel camera, essentially upgrading the G2 Mini for LTE markets. We have the usual set of uh, wireless connectivity, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, assisted GPS, DLNA and NFC. LG decided to include an infrared blaster at the top, which can be handily managed by the supplied Q Remote app, which has a number of TV and set-top box brands and models uh, preset in. You can tuck the Q Remote handily in the status bar and even have it on the lock screen for quicker access uh, to its commands. The Optimus UI Gallery sports a standard thumbnail grid view, which can be pinched to zoom in and out of the folders. There are rich editing options built right into it with color effects and drawing capabilities. The music player can take you to a YouTube video of the current song with the touch of a button, but sports no equalizers in loudspeaker mode, just a few presets when you pluck the supplied in-ear headphones. Even then we couldn't hear much difference switching between the different equalizer presets, while the loudspeaker performed just average, producing a fairly strong but somewhat flat and distorted sound. The G2 Mini runs uh, every major video format you throw at it, with the inclusion of uh, MKV, DivX, XVD files and up to 1080p resolutions at that. You can float the video playback in a windowed mode on top of uh, anything else you're doing underneath too. The 8 megapixel camera unit on the back of the G2 Mini sports an LED flash next to it and is governed by the customary Optimus UI camera interface. The camera app lets you say things like whiskey or cheese to take a picture from afar. The app offers the typical set of options for LG phones like panorama, time catch, dynamic tone which is HDR and night scenes, plus a few color effects thrown in for a good measure. The phone takes about a second or two to focus and take a picture in adequate lighting, but uh, the HDR mode takes uh, 4 or 5 seconds to finish processing, during which you ought to hold the, hold the phone very still. You can use the volume rocker buttons as shutter keys, as usual with LG phones, but the placement on the back makes this function rather awkward to use. The G2 Mini produces photos with uh, a tad more intense colors than what you see in reality, but uh, still pleasant to look at. The pictures are somewhat underexposed, resulting in a slightly darker image than what your eyes see in front of the lens. The exposure situation naturally gets better when you shoot in HDR, which however, as we mentioned, takes a while to process the photo, so it is not suitable for all scenarios. The level of detail is also lacking somewhat compared to some other 8 megapixel mobile shooters we've tested, and the photos are too soft around the edges. Indoors the phone performs uh, in a similar way, capturing slightly underexposing photos, Noise starts getting quite more visible when we shoot in lower light and the pics are somewhat soft, lacking enough detail. The LED flash did an average job when illuminating the scene from our standard 5 feet distance, splashing the light in the center of the frame and obscuring the edges. The G2 Mini is capable of 1080p video recording with 30 frames per second and outdoors it does what it says on the tin without skipped framing or visible artifacts. Moving objects smudge a bit too much though and the footage is overly soft and dark. So, has LG managed to make an appealing mid-range proposition with the G2 Mini? At the suggested $350 a Euros price tag, we'd have to say no. What should be a scaled-down version of the excellent G2 turns out to be lacking on many important counts. Unfortunately, the visual resemblance to the flagship uh, masks many weak spots, such as uh, a chubby body, sketchy code quality, poor screen resolution and an average camera performance. For this or even lower price, you can get many phones that are much better such as Google's Nexus 5, the Octo One Touch Idaho X Plus, the Moto X Moto G, even LG's own Optimus F7 is a good alternative. If you want the ultimate mini version, we'd suggest splurging um, 100 or so more for an Xperia Z1 Compact, which is among the best small Android warriors currently on the market, with most everything the big Z1 offers but uh, in a palm friendly package. Overall, the G2 Mini seems to come with a bad timing, as it now has to compete not only against last year's mini versions of the brand name flagships, but probably with an S5 Mini or an HC1 M8 Mini, if those are in the cards of course. On top of that, 
or maybe because of it, LG evidently didn't put much efforts in polishing the performance of the G2 Mini itself, so its potential sales will be essentially just riding on the coattails of the established G2 flagship. 